Well, I have an old friend uh, in Canada that I've known since high school, and um, this is the kind of joke he would play. So I, I thought, actually, that it, it said there was a, a um, message on my phone at home here in Berkeley, and it said uh, it's like Lars from Sweden. <laughs> and I thought, this has to be Tim. His name's Tim. Um, but then, actually, my wife got the the message uh, forwarded to her cell phone, and she noticed it actually had a real Swedish phone number. <laughs> so then we thought, well, I guess it's possible, you know. You can see um, one type of labor market situation and another that are very, very similar, except for something that changed. Uh, so an example would be, uh, the one that they cited was a study of the effect of the minimum wage in New Jersey. To say, let's survey the restaurants on the two sides of the border before the minimum wage went up, and then afterwards. And we would see, okay, on the New Jersey side, these guys have a higher minimum wage. On the Pennsylvania side, nothing's happened. So the Pennsylvania side, is representing uh, a comparison for what you would have expected to go on in New Jersey if there hadn't been a rise in the minimum wage. I think what they were really trying to um, recognize was those ideas of this, these simple comparisons um, are extremely now extremely widely used by economists of all kinds, not just people studying the labor market, but people studying lots of other th finance markets. A validation or a commendation for this whole approach, and so I think since there's lots of young people doing that kind of work nowadays, I think they're basically they'll feel well. The, this sort of suggests that, that the Nobel Committee at least thinks that this is a you know a way to go.